About to find out who will be the first PTL Open champion. Absolutely, and it's pretty stoked. We are seeing yet again Tristan on stream again as he's just piloting that massive Rebel Swarm. Uh, with absolute precision and ease, and actually, oddly enough, it looks like we're getting a rock formation very similar to the last game, and Tristan automatically going for the same type of setup he had last game. I feel like it's always a solid strategy. Know where you're putting the rocks, know where you want your ships. Have a first couple of turns planned out, so there's just no variance. Mm -hmm. Uh, they call, um, as they call it on uh, uh, turn zero is super super important it seems right. like Tristan's got it locked down and, and it looks like um, they've got a setup there and he's going to be able to dive into that whole r section there and Joe we have seen him on stream as well he was able to beat um, Billy yeah in a, in a re really tight match there too he 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 made that call and that hard two that dove his whole team in there and that was a huge turn for him and, and there you go it's just a great call so we're in for an interesting list because we do have the one bigs uh, we do have a bit of uh, damage mitigation in uh, the Nora, and we have some interesting stuff with that um, higher PS. It's all, it's all higher PS here, so all of Joe's list is going to attack and move um, after... Oh, sorry, well, has the initiative because it's higher PS than all of That's Tristan's right. list. So if you're Joe, what's, uh, what's your plan of attack here? I mean, the Rebel Swarm is scary. Their attacks are efficient. Do you have low agility? Yeah, again, this is one of those situations where he, again, is flying a Joust list as well for all intents and purposes. Because of the BTLA4 locking that forward arc, he's kind of locked into moving forward. Uh, Biggs is a forward arc, and, and um, Nora is also a forward arc. So you Joust down and try to get into range one and have your... If you can get the dream where you have Nora in range one of something and your BTLA uh, Horton into range two of something, mm -hmm. something's going to die. And that's, yeah. I think, what he's going to have to do a couple of times. The how, however, uh, the Biggs bubble is probably not going to last that long. You've no, I don't think so. Five ships shooting at two agility That's right. Especially if Tristan's able to get a round of tracers off to set up uh, four target lock shots with focus. You could lose uh, Biggs very quickly. It's also good to note that I feel like Joe's Horton, who's the all oh, intensive purposes, the stress bot. Mm hmm. It's not going to do a whole lot here, I don't think, versus these ships. No, as we've seen so far a couple times against Tristan, um, mechanics and shenanigans haven't seemed to phase his list at all. He just powers through all of it with that rebel ingenuity and grit, right? Like, Yeah, absolutely. That's how they were able to bring down an empire, by just continually flying with, with Moxie. And that's the way Tristan flies, too. He's, he's doing the same opening he did last turn, three turn everybody up. He's probably going to do... He's not going to do the three bank next turn, so he doesn't... I don't think he wants to worry about clipping that asteroid with his Y-Wing. He's probably going to do three forward again and then turn in, or or two straight everybody and then turn in with the hard twos. I don't know. We'll see how he goes. He's As we've been saying in previous rounds, he's not a prize to using that seismic torpedo i would so, actually hope sorry for cutting you off there i would love to see him do that we want to see it we're excited about this seismic torpedo three yeah, rounds in yeah we have had yet a chance for him to fire at it and if he digs into that lane he could very easily blow up that one rock that's sitting uh, on coruscant right now right. and just drive right through that wedge which is big enough for his for his list however i don't think he'll get there fast enough um joe making a call to dive back behind the rocks and, and force tristan to come through him and drag him drag him through the debris when he can engage on his terms so this is a very similar strategy to what uh, Mike did last round. He saw the swarm, he set up, and he was like, no, I don't want to be a part of this. Although, Joe set up a little farther away, which is probably better. Mm -hmm. um, what's your strategy with running? You're going to have to run head on to them eventually. And that is the problem. He has no turrets. He's going to have to at some point point at the ships. And that's where the that's where a joust list is strongest in so much as that if you don't have any other option but to point arcs against that list... If his arcs are always pointing in the right direction, he's going to have the advantage, and that's how Joust List is set up. And Tristan's been on point today, making sure all of his ships have been pointing in the right direction, and he's just been mowing people down. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see the Rebel dream is alive. I know for a while, Rebel players were like, oh, we have nothing good. Like, how can we be a part of this? Missiles, mm -hmm. you know, giant ships with too much health. Mm -hmm. But yeah, here we are at the finals with... Rebel stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I uh, love it. Only one Biggs. Um, nothing too complicated there. Only one regen. Which, again, is the Re is the Rebel bread and butter. Yeah, absolutely. But this is by no stretch of the imagination any level of meta list. This is all unique stuff. Again, as we commented last round, when's the last time you saw Horton Solemn on the table? That's amazing. And the fact that he got into the finals is really cool. Uh, we Obviously, uh, Joe was able to get past Evan Cameron, who we saw a couple times fly spectacularly oh, heroic man. so I would love to have seen He's that heroic. match too that would have been so. a great game as well 
So Tristan, as we said, he did go for the three bank around that corner. Yep. It's going to give him uh, a lot of option to be able to dig in. He can hard two to the left uh, of all of his swarm, or he can two nice bank. Line. I think he's probably going to three bank again and just blast. I think we might actually see the seismic. I think we might see the seismic. The hand gesture there was, I did it. I didn't bump. Yeah, I know. And that's actually a beautiful formation. Yeah, see. it's very tight. I've actually been really, I've really liked the way Tristan's been flying, the way he's been keeping in formation, but the way he jukes and jives with, the, with all those banks, it makes for some very cool looking formations. Like it's not pinwheel per se, but That's right. it is and it isn't sort of a thing, but it, it, it's quite interesting to look at. And again, another very thematic list. Under, other than the one arc and the Z95s, this is an entire original trilogy showdown. Yeah, right? it's absolutely the truth. All uh, ships that we've seen before, all ships that we know what they do, and it's all ships that we <laughs> recognize and know and love. So this is really cool. And it's also really interesting seeing them fighting around Coruscant. I'm pretty sure that many X-Wings took down the Death Star as well. Yeah, only three. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure three X-Wings, one Y-Wing is the only thing that made it out of there. <laughs> there they are. Taking down the Y-Wing, ready to take on the universe. Mm -hmm. It looks like during the, um, the downtime, um, uh, Horton went into the shop and got fixed. That's good. That Zed doesn't care. It's rocking that one broken wing. That's it. Shooting the one dice, I guess, because there's not a second gun. It's battle wounds. <laughs> it's battle wounds. <laughs> Gotta show off your battle scars. It's intimidating. So, again, I'm super hoping we're going to see three banks again from Tristan, and then two straights, and then blasting that asteroid. And I'm thinking, obviously, at this point now, Joe's going to have to do uh, hard twos for everybody, or two banks, because I think the hard two from Nora puts her on that rock. Oh yeah, she has to bank if she doesn't want to eat the rock. She yeah. has regen though, so yeah. I mean, if you're just thinking about running away, take the damage next turn, but do then a green maneuver. But then she's also pointing at the next rock the next time, and it's not necessarily the best situation for him. No, and I'm wondering what Joe's oh, okay, so plan of attack is here. Tristan continues to not do the things we think or well, want no, to do. Well, no, Tristan's making the smart move. Take your time, see where he's going to be, because you can also, uh, if you look where... Well, Tristan's arm is covering it, but generally there's a hole at the top uh, near the left-hand side that he could slip his dudes through and get an engagement happening around there. And that makes more sense. I mean, we just wanted to see a seismic We just torpedo. wanted to see him do the three-bank seismic torpedo charge. Uh, that was just selfishness, but that's okay. We're allowed to be selfish. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we'll have to play a, a cash game with him just to see a seismic yes, torpedo. exactly. Four games he's been on, three games he's been on stream today, not once did he decide to size my torpedo for us. That's okay. But I mean, that's the power with a lot of these uh, swarm lists and rebel. You don't need initiative. You don't care about initiative. Mm -hmm. So give some toys. You use them. You don't use them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. That's true. I think the, the real thing he cares most about are those thread tracers. That's right. The two point initiative bid would do nothing for you. Absolutely. And what else really could he have used the two points on? He could upgrade. If he upgraded a ship, the PS is no longer matched, and you lose a lot of that quality I've, consistency that you get in a in a completely PS agnostic uh, list, right? Like, confuse, you don't want to do that. It confuses uh, a lot of people when I say it. I am a fan of flechette torpedo. I, Throwing a stress out on an ace, it doesn't have to hit. You just have to shoot. That's true. And most, it's a good upgrade. Most ships that you want to stress generally have four hull or less. Mm -hmm. It's a neat idea. That's actually true. He could switch to a flechette torpedo. But, as he said, uh, not today, but at Naboo, the, the seismic torpedo has helped him in certain games where you think you're safe behind a lane and that, and that, that rock disappears and then an entire brick of ships comes That's away. right. It happened. Uh, he played Canadian National Champion Alan Fong mm -hmm. and he uh, blew up the rock and Alan's just face was completely stunned. It was a picture, mo mm -hmm. picture quality moment there. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're going to go with a bank here if you're interested. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Two uh, banks. Probably a two bank. Straighten everybody out, point them directly. As you said, he still has that gap he can fly through. That's right. He can react to almost anything that Joe does. What is Joe going to do? Do you think he's going to dig into that space right there, or is he going to try to fly around? We've seen in one of Joe, the last game Joe was on stream, and he's not opposed to just that turning on where that rock is. Absolutely. I feel like he's trying to get Tristan to commit to maybe a turn. To be honest with you, in all fairness, the hard two with Biggs, the hard two with Nora, and then the two bank with Horton, he points all of them through that space. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Tristan's going for the slower option, the one banks, which is, again is is a better call than the one that we were thinking. It lets him see more of the space, and it and it's tighter, so he's not as close to that asteroid. Right, that's that's the truth. Yeah, this is actually going to be a tough nut for Joe to crack. How to engage Tristan Swarm because there's so much space uh, at that uh, in that open middle of the board where Tristan is right now, and he's got he's got it locked down. We haven't seen anyone. Crack the nut today, so... No, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully we will. 
Not that we want Tristan. No, we love Tristan. He's actually an honorary PTL member. So if he wins, PTLers take the first PTL Open. Technically, yes. Technically. He's part of the family. He was on the party bus up to Syracuse. And that makes you... Once you've partied and drank with PTL, you are That's PTL. That's it. Uh, he also purchased some of our PTL swag, which unfortunately we couldn't get for the event today. Our distributor was uh, ill, but we have uh, shirts and hats mm -hmm. and all sorts of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So for sure. But it would be interesting just to see some, some variants and see how can you engage us, can you... What do you do? Uh, I tell you what, uh, I have no idea. I don't want to say, oh, fly a turret and maybe you'll be okay. <laughs> if, uh, it was, if it was me, I would just lose. That's basically what I would do. I wouldn't really know what to do. Um, again, I mean, you've got the Bigs bubble for the first round, so I guess you you got to make sure that the, that the Bigs blanket uh, holds true. And it looks like... Joe has elected to dive through that section. He figures, you know what? I'm going to make my mark here. This is the chance. Biggs will survive this round no matter what, for sure. It'll be almost impossible to kill him because I think he's only going to take shot from the Y-Wing, maybe? Yeah. He might even be out of range. I mean, it's probably a long three. He should have it. I think you probably almost want it to be out of range. For this one. For this one, Yeah, for because sure. that lets you that lets him si set up and he's got more options now. Now Horton can... One bank, two bank, or a hard two, and come around the rock that way. Like, he's got many options here. Bates definitely doesn't want to trade any damage on this turn, I don't think. Yeah. And that looks like no range and there, and no range we there. We are out. So, do you think we see it? Yeah, I think we're going to see it. You think he does it? I think he does it. I hope he does it. <laughs> that was some fancy wordplay. Will he do it? Does he do it? Will he do it? I hope he does. Tune in next time. <laughs> we'll see. It might happen. So All this and more next round on x -Wing. <laughs> <laughs> Last time on PTL Open. <laughs> oh, anyways, uh, so back to real talk here. Whether or not Tristan decides to to grace us with that seismic torpedo, what do you do? I mean, Tristan's in a phenomenal place. He's got this nice set of columns. He, I think he rebel specials here one straight with everybody. Yeah. I don't think he doesn't need to do anything crazy. He's in a great position. Um, and what does Joe do? Does he bank with Biggs through the the gap between those two rocks there? Uh, does he get, does he bank uh, ship right or does he bank ship left and take that approach? And Another question. Items off the side of rock that may or may not be there anymore. The question is, is Joe going to expect the seismic torpedo? Because it would vary what he would do. I mean, if, he, if Tristan goes in and blows up that rock, that frees up some space for Joe, right? Because if Joe decides, oh, I'm going to go straight with Biggs, Rebel Special, one straight, and then that rock is there for the next turn? Exactly that. <laughs> if, if, Joe, if Tristan decides not to do it, that might actually be better for him. Well, the question is, will Joe expect it? Because generally it seems like no one even thinks about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'd be a good turn to flash it to your opponent, remind him that you have it, just to mess with his mind a little bit. That's some good sportsmanship. Remember, I have a seismic torpedo. Or as I always say to certain of our PTL members, black market slicers. <laughs> <They laughs> Just letting you know I have it. They know who they are. <laughs> they know who they are. <clears throat> so what is your favorite thing about Tristan's list? Besides the fact that there's T-65s and I love them? Yeah, besides the obvious the madness of it, like what um, aspect, what single aspect about Tristan's list do you think is your favorite part of it? I love that there's two bandits with thread tracers. Mm -hmm. I've always liked the thread tracers, and I'm always trying to squeeze in that one bandit at 13 points. Mm -hmm. And then I put them down on the table. I'm excited. I'm gonna have some actions and stuff. And then they, they blow them up. Mm -hmm. And then I don't get I don't get to shoot it. Mm -hmm. But with two, that feels like your opponent probably is not even gonna waste his time trying to kill the first bandit, especially with a stress bot on the table. Yeah, the and stress, then the stress bot and the X wings are definitely the bigger target they're the bigger target so then that means you might actually get both of them off and it means i love things where you can essentially have a push the limit type thing happening mm -hmm. that doesn't involve you taking stress and costs less points and stuff and that's the instance of that's what it is a thread tracer gives everyone two actions on that one turn if it hits three actions are always a great so idea. i'm gonna say that the tracer is probably my favorite thing how about you uh, I gotta agree. I, I do love the fact that there's no one right call on anything that you're attacking. A good list is when you present your opponent with multiple problems and that they have to solve. That's right. And Tristan's list is a multi-problem puzzle. What do you shoot at first? Do you get rid of M9G8? Do you burn down those Zs so they can't get the tracers off? Do you try to take the stress hog down? They're all viable strategies That's right. and not one of them is going to be better than the other. Uh, now, for Joe's list, my favorite thing is, obviously, I love the fact that Nora is a phenomenal anchor in that build. She's reliable, she's tanky as heck, and she's going to be super hard to take down. Um, but I love... Oh, he, oh, 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 oh! He has Seismic Torpedo. Oh, oh, here and, it comes! Yeah. The dream! So just Biggs is going to take the potential damage here. He's oh, got to roll hits. The Y-Wing. Oh, and he's safe. There it is, folks. 
Yay! Yay! Potentially the first ever seismic torpedo on a stream. I don't know. I've never seen one before. I love it. No, it was definitely the first seismic torpedo ever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tristan. Uh, I, I love Hort Horton. I love the fact that Horton has that built-in Predator and then the R3A2 kind of a thing. That's a really unique build for a stress hog. It's not something we see all the time. And let's just take a moment to, to revel at the fact that he went around, took all that time trying to take cover on that first engagement yep. from that big rock, yep. and it's gone. Yes. And here's five ships. They're probably going to get an extra target lock, and you're just going to eat that bigs. That's, nom, nom, nom. That's probably going to... And now, here's the question. Did Joe expect the seismic and do something crazy? I mean, if you do something crazy and try to run away... Nope. No, he, he did, did not. not expect the seismic. And did not do something crazy. He had and, to play it safe because yeah. I mean, if Tristan didn't do it, yeah, then you could put yourself on a rock or. Okay, so that's not even position. that's not even close to where that should be. Yeah, there we go. That Nora was definitely tilted a lot more. She should be a little more rotated. Hopefully, they get that close enough. Now, if we're trying to say what our favorite thing about Joe's list is, I'm gonna pick Horton off the top because <laughs> in a list like this, you wouldn't have a whole lot of damage output mm -hmm. with just the regular Y wing. Mm -hmm. And with a couple of extra points, you're definitely going to have a higher chance of putting in the damage. Agreed. You get the higher PS, and you get the fact that you've got an M9G8-esque re-roll on any of your blanks. That's, That's right. Pretty awesome. And the higher pilot skill is nice as well, for sure. Yeah. So it does look like it does look like Joe did not suspect or did not see the seismic torpedo coming. And uh, this is going to be interesting to see what happens. It's good to know that he can't hear us. Oh, okay. <laughs> interesting. I do right. like that. Uh, you know, maybe he just wanted to make sure still in the bigs bubble so I mean at uh, this point if you were Tristan would you even bother on that arc if you could shoot him wouldn't you just rip bigs off the table oh you 100% just evaporate bigs from the table this town and now Tristan's gonna two bank everybody left and just burn down Nora he won't even care if the stress hog is peppering his flank I don't think that matters to him it's also a viable option to go this the opposite way and just nuke that the Y wing on the next turn take it off and then you're looking at a 4 or 5 v 1 True, definitely true. He's got both options. The thing is, though, in the next turn, that uh, so right now Joe's deciding to whether or not he wants to push. Uh, I like that idea, getting some getting some range, allowing him to get a turn next turn. Yeah, and get a hard two in there, uh, ship left, and then kind of be involved in that sort of situation. So Horton's probably going to be coming in behind Bigs, I would assume. Yep, to strafe with some stress. Uh, he's checking range for target lock, lock which sure. is a great way to know whether or not you're eating any damage that turn. Gets his action back and can decide not to push. Okay. I mean, new players, that's that's not an underhanded tactic at all. That's actually a really, really solid choice to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So in case you're curious what happened there, uh, Joe did his first action, which is a barrel roll. And then because he has pushed a limit on there, he decided to pick a target lock to see whether or not he was in range three of any of uh, Tristan's ship. And when the target lock action failed, he gets his action back. And now that he's armed with the data, knowing that he's not that's getting right. fired upon, he doesn't need to push. See... And the, that's a really effective and a smart tactic. The greasier way to do it would be to check range on target lock on... Uh, the one uh, at the back. The one at the back. Knowing you can't make it, you have to put your template down. You can see if you're in range of the stress bot or not. Speaking of uh, other players that are out there, I know that there's a propensity to uh, fly casual. And a lot of us, once we've had a lot of games under our belt, we generally know when something's in range 2 or 3 and we just put the tokens down. But you should always be measuring because yeah. data is important and data always matters. Whether or not you know, you know you're in potentially guaranteed range 3, but are you in range 2? How far into range 3 are you? Is that going to help you on the next turn? That's really important information you should have. And most top tier players will do that because it's super important to That's have right. that knowledge. Why would you not want more information on the board state? Right, okay, so see some stress getting Stress bot shooting stress bot. I love it. Stress on stress love. All the stress. All stress. Nothing but stress. All so right, two hits coming through. And uh, Tristan's casual roll. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing the dice, not Karen. Telling you that underhanded Chuck. It seems to work when he attacks. Not so great on when he defends. All right, so we've got uh, second stress coming from TLT Shot Primary. Yep. Here comes the first one. And we'll see some hard right. reroll because he can reroll all of his blanks. Yep. Oh, oh. He did not. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, okay, so hit crit. That's potentially guaranteed damage as well. Yep. Two hits, one damage, that's it. So the shields are down on Gold Squadron. Here comes the big shot. Is he going to focus? Oh, he focuses. Would you have focused? 
-hmm. with Biggs? Would you have gone for that that damage push, or would you work, try to survive? You're going to take so many dice. It's going to take so many dice, it might not even be a problem. Mm -hmm. I agree. But if Biggs lives one more turn, it could be huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's interesting. On that last TLT shot, it didn't end up mattering, but he would have been able to re-roll two of those blanks. Yep. Because um, Horton saw his ability is to re-roll any secondary weapon mm -hmm. dice at range two to three. Yep, that's it. Which makes him a perfect carrier for the TLT and a PTLA Wiling, which is why I think it's my favorite part of his list. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely my favorite part of his list. Because when you're going to be stressed, you're not going to never ever be able to get actions. Now, uh, having that built-in pilot ability to do so is a really is a really cool option. So it looks like Tristan is opting to stress Biggs. He thought about it for a second. He's wondering, can I kill Biggs? Does it matter? Um, honestly, stressing. You're so stressed at this. You have two stress anyways at this point. Why does it matter? Exactly. At it's, this point, while you've got three stress on your ship, you might as well stress because you know he's going to want to throw stress out everywhere else. Yep. M9 G8 not doing anything for him that time. Okay. Two Biggs evades. Handily evades that. Nice. Stress him again. At this point, you have nothing left to lose. Because, I mean, to take away the focus token from Biggs in case he survives is a good option. It also limits his abilities That's of what right. he can do next turn. Okay, three hits. Yeah. So one damage going through on Biggs. Mm -hmm. That's a guaranteed hit for those of us at home because you do not get secondary, uh, you don't get additional range on a secondary weapon. Fixing the rocks. Yeah. Sometimes they shift around in space. It happens. Yep. We okay. call that inertia, I believe. And <laughs> Tristan deciding to just go ahead and say, nope, that's where that terrain lives, that debris lives now, because I'm just going to keep pushing it around. M9G8 is value. Yes, absolutely. Much value. So one damage going through. Thanks for the finger, because it hit the five. Mm -hmm. So I think we were talking before about why would you, why wouldn't you shoot the, the tracer first? Mm -hmm. And I think this is why, because now he has the option of shooting the tracer mm -hmm. and grabbing it, switching the target lock on X-Wing number five. I see the M9 G8 droid. Yeah, that's huge. Oh, that's a sneaky that's idea. That's brilliant. He's going to so, get all the rerolls anyways. And then he can shift it over and get those rerolls again later on in the game. Yeah. That is super smart. That's a super cool idea. I like it. Tristan, you sneaky dog, you. You see which one this is? Uh, that's probably going to be two. Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't 100% sure. It's probably two. He's just putting it beside range. two is my no. guess. It would make sense for the range. Uh, so three hits. He's rolling dice, I guess. Oh, no, he changed his mind. You realize that three hits? Yeah. Can't be evaded by two dice? Yeah, it's unavoidable. Here it's... comes all the target locks. Yeah. Target locks for everyone. Yeah, you get a target lock, and you get a target lock, and you get a target lock. Tristan rocking the... Yep, uh, switch the lock because... on the M9G8, which I love. Mm -hmm. And here comes the pain it's train. Target lock party. <laughs> yeah. And now he's got target lock focus on uh, a whole bunch of ships. BYO target lock. Mm-hmm. He's also rocking the uh, five and six win. I think he's rocking the four and five win target locks from the Naboo Open. I think Tristan went five and two down there. He went five and two. Not bad. I'm pretty sure he said Not he bad with some T-65s. I'm pretty sure he took down two or three row boats. He did, actually. Okay, so that's... Comes two hits. Ooh, Ooh okay, so poo. two damage going on Biggs. Yeah. So Biggs <clears> has <throat> one haul, one integrated astromech. I don't think he's living from another couple of shots here. No, because T60, both the T65s still get the fire, I think. That's right. And he's electing, Ugh. oh, hot fire. Hot, hot fire, yeah. no fire, dead, dead. Dead, dead. And as we were saying before with uh, with his bigs, sorry, with uh, Tristan's dice, you know, why do you need the target lock? Mm, I don't think he needs target locks. <laughs> I think he wasted a point. I think FFG needs to nerf Tristan. Tristan, please. Nerf Tristan? Well, mm. we, and Evan? Yeah. Too many nerfs. Bad hammer. That's it, you gotta nerf Rebel Swarm too strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take away everything that Rebels have good. That's it. Initially. Get, get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of those generics. <laughs> These PS2 guys. <laughs> we, we need a new list that you can never have more than one PS, um, one generic pilot of any <laughs> All generics are now named. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. So, so, yeah, just gonna go ahead and continue to never <laughs> miss with any of his attacks. Guess I'm shooting that Y Wing now. <laughs> I guess I'll just kill this thing now. Killing one ship a turn isn't enough. I need to shoot more things. I mean, it's a sound strategy from Tristan. Just always hit everything you fire at. That's a great idea. I mean, that wins you championships. <laughs> so I guess at this point now, you're probably just going, yeah, I think I'm going after that Y-Wing. I think so. I think with it being stressed and the fact that you got that extra early damage in, you just one bank everything and say Kaplow? Yeah. Or with... one straight everything and say Kaplow? I don't know. No, I'd one bank everything. It puts you in a nice laneway to maybe K-turn on the next turn and uh, take time mosey around and try to hit that arc. Here's the thing, if he one straights everything, he still has the option to two turn the rest of his list against Nora next turn. That is true. It gives him the most vectors, and Horton, the fastest move Horton can do is a hard two to the uh, ship left. So he 
doesn't actually get out of any arcs. I think maybe he gets out of the Y Wings arc, but then you just stress Nora. I'm just wondering if the one bank to ship right for all of Tristan's guys mm -hmm. don't doesn't get them out of Nora's arc. No, it if does. She, she two yeah. turns, she might not have a shot if you move away. It's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, I mean, they're both viable options, and we'll see which which one Tristan decides to pick, right? Yeah, he seems to be flying this super well, knows what he's doing, so he will show us the right option momentarily. It's, it's too easy. Whatever he decides is going to be better than whatever I would have done. That's not true. <laughs> you, do, you do okay, kid. Mm -hmm. You do all right. So now, if you're Joe, what's, what's your plan of attack here? Losing bigs on just one round of engagement. I mean, you're going to kill the gold squadron, sure, but uh, how are you feeling? Uh, you're feeling, you're feeling, I don't know how you're feeling, to be honest with you. Yeah, you are feeling like, do you or can you, can you take the gold squadron off without having to sacrifice Horton? So, let's say, in theory, this turn, we lose the gold squadron and Horton. Can Horton Nora... still, yeah, because Horton's still sitting on six life, five, sh five hull, one shield. But, uh, he I could mean... potentially take one, two, three, four, five rounds of firing. And as we've just seen, there's still one thread tracer out there. Yeah, I mean, if Tristan wants, he can bank in, shoot the Thread Tracer, and that's probably the end of that Y-Wing. Um, can Nora kill two X-Wings and two, uh, two Talisman Bots? All oh, by herself. So he's going for a block, I think. Yeah, the block is a great call. If you can keep that live another round, you're, you're feeling okay. Kid. So is whether or not he's three-banking everybody else? I don't think he would. I feel like that's a really... You think it's a one-bank from everybody else? I think else? it's a one-bank. Yeah. Yeah. That is a one bank. No, one straight. Oh, the straight. Again, okay. Tristan continually doing things that we don't know. Oh, well, you suggested the one straight. I mean, it gives him all of his arcs everywhere and it allows him to, you know. And actually, like the really good pilot he is, he still fits a 3K turn next round. Yes. Well, not with uh, number X Wing number four. No, he fits a 3K with the Z1. Yeah, I think so as well. I don't uh, think you think need that, to, but think, yeah. But the option is there. The option is there. Having options is always bottom. And a great then he's thing. gonna be in behind Nora yeah. if she if she banks in that way. That was a pretty smooth move. So the only problem with uh, kind of running this kind of combo lineup is sometimes things get a little jostled around and moving away his template he ended up hitting one of the ships and we just basically lined it back up again. Yeah, I always suggest waiting your ships if possible. Yeah, it's the, a it's it's a good idea. You can super glue some uh, washers up to the bottom of the base and then fill the bottom of your base with the silicone. Yep, the silicone is, is uh, huge. Actually it really Adds a lot of resistance to the bottom of it, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, with the weight, doesn't really move around a whole lot. It makes it anti-slip, and it helps it uh, stay locked down. Not only that, it's a long day. I'm sure they're, the, everyone wants to win. You're probably a little nervous at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, mistakes happen, but it's not, it's not detrimental. So this, this is why I had suggested the one straight on everybody, because now he has his choice of options. Yes. I think Tristan is casting a wide net, because if he gets that blo block on Horton, he lights him up. If Horton slips the net... Then he's got his entire list of fire at Nora. He target locks her and, and evaporates. What also her, makes it great as well is yeah, you could shoot Nora. You could also evaporate that Y wing and maybe even have some of your other ships start shooting the arc. I mean, like I said, he's got the option. The way his ships are set up in that beautiful column, di diving right down the center of the board, he has every option available to him. Right. And he wouldn't have been able to have these options <coughs> if that rock was still there. Exactly, which is why we were really glad that Tristan showed us the real power behind the seismic torpedo in his list. Every list, seismic torpedoes from now on. Seismic torpedoes, extra munitions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what ship could you do that on in Rebels? K-Wing. Forget the plasma torpedoes. Well, yeah. Leave those homing missiles at home yes. where they belong. You just extra munitions. Just blow up every rock on the field. Just fly wide open. It's done. Oh, so he pulled the block on Horton. Yes. Beautiful, Huge. beautiful read, Tristan. Huge. Beautiful read. You can't just win. You have to keep all your ships alive. So I think then do you, at this point, I think you just... Put all your damage into Horton. Remember, Horton had two stress, so the block didn't do a lot in terms of action efficiency. Yeah. Um, but it keeps that wide wing alive. That's yes. what you want. And then nothing out of his primary, so Horton's going after that uh, X-Wing right there. Yep. And then stressing him a second time. Comes the TLTs. Mm -hmm. X-Wing's favorite. Mm -hmm. Two X. Can't be compared with that. Uh, Horton's ability finally went off. Yes. Huzzah. Uh And he does damage. Uh, unless, unless he Tristan wants to focus. focus, I don't think he will. I think thinking keep, about yeah. it. I think you keep that focus for offense. Yeah, I think so as well. I think you're. I think you're. Uh, you have the the keep the pain train coming. Oh, okay. He goes for it. He knows better. He's playing defensively, maybe he thinks he knows he can kill the Y wing, especially if he gets a tracer off. He has offensive modifications. That's true. He does have an absolute ton of, of damage still come out. Second I mean, it's still shot. a game. As much as it seems, oh no, like Ooh. Joe is in a bad position. 
Uh, you have a regen ship that's still worth like half your list. Yep. That could potentially do four damage around. Yeah. Five at range one. You got it. And that's Nora adding three hits on probably the same X Wing. Well, obviously, yeah. one that she has target locked. You got it. And now he's got no tokens. Okay, so feeling a little rookie pain here. Yeah, so the hit crit gets through, so he's going to bypass uh, shields, because that one took some damage from Horton too, I believe, so that... Oh, uh, yes, he took one from Horton. So he should be getting... Did he? he? Yeah, the crit should be on Hall. Uh, it looked like the second TLT shot went through. Uh, but they're not pulling damage cards off, so maybe I'm wrong. Well, I, don't think that, I, thought, I thought I had no data for the one hit. Oh, okay, you're right, you're right. It was, I thought it was two hits, sorry. Alright, so just shields on the rookie. Rookie's feeling okay about... Getting peppered with uh, four attacks there and uh, making it out alive. Mm -hmm. Okay, here comes the tracer. Now, do you fire on Horton to wipe him off the yeah, board? Yeah, 100%. I okay. would. I wouldn't think twice about it. All right, there you go. And got auto hit with guidance chips. Gee. So it turns out thread tracers are really useful against one evade ships. So I think after the PTL open, we might see $80 uh, Zeds. I hope so. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to start selling all my nine. It's done. I got about 350 Thread Tracers in my collection, so who wants to buy them off me? Let me know. What are they even coming? Uh, the Tide Events prototypes, of which I have three, so yeah. You get two yeah. of them in each. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. I got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. He's the new Paul Heaver. He's, He's the good. top of the bubble boy today. That's exactly <laughs> it, right? That's exactly it. Well, not just yet, but... Well, far from over, as you were saying earlier. That's right. I mean, you the thread, kill... the thread Tracers is a bit of a bad sign, though, because there's going to be a lot of rerolling going on. One of those X Wings goes down. Nora has a decent chance of killing some of the ships, but not even that realistically. Nora can realistically one shot both those Zs one per turn, so that's a huge thing, too. So we're seeing target lock being spent to re. Oh, yeah, re roll everything. Do I switch his dice? Yeah, I would do the same. Okay. Uh, okay, wait a second. Oh, so he just decided uh, to not use the target lock. Okay. Alright. It's a different ship firing now, so one for eight, a hit crit. crit. So that's the last shield on Horton. Mm hmm. Yeah, so essentially, if those two X-Wings go down, it sounds far-fetched, you're probably going to win. Uh, if if, if uh, Joe can knock out those two X-Wings? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, if Joe knocks out those two X-Wings, he's definitely at, at the definite huge advantage right now. So, Even I mean, one he, of those unfortunately, he didn't do all that much damage on the rookie. He just got shields down. Uh, but if he can get Horton out of the situation, he, he's still very much in this game. And you could also keep doing that. All right, he's got something. Two? Takes two. Horton's still alive, sitting on he two hull. He just hull. has to survive this Rick. turn. Sitting on three hull. If he can survive this turn, it would be huge. Okay, so the last Z95, the, no, it's the last rookie? Yep, last rookie. Range three, I think it was, or is it range two? Uh, looked like a range three. Okay. Uh, he's going to definitely spend the lock on that. Mm-hmm. And he's, yeah. oh. Okay. Ooh, that's the, there goes a Y wing. Is that dead Horton? Yep. So that was really tough for Joe, especially because he did not get very much damage out of that round, out of his Horton that round. Uh, to only do one damage, to only get you know shield down on that rookie, that's that wasn't an advantageous turn at all. No, that was definitely not. So it's rough now. Uh, We're looking at one banks with uh, everything that's not a Y wing. I think so. I think that's what I do. I think you one back everything and target lock this round, so you have the lock for next round after your K turn and line back up and focus. But who knows, every single time we think we know what Tristan's going to do, he does something different. Yeah, absolutely. He might very well do the hard two with the Y-Wing there, and then he might K-turn one of the, the Zeds, and then he two. might bank the rest of the team. Who knows? The Y-Wing's probably going to hard two, I think. Seems right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where Nora's going. I think that's the same thing Joe's thinking right now. Like, just... Okay, so we can talk about our options here. we got some time. Mm -hmm. um, if the ship two turns right... Does going in the corner help you at all? Probably not. It means you might get a shot without Y-Wing. Oh, you mean just doing the three bank with Nora and driving away? With, uh, the two turn is what I'm talking about two right Two turn now. with yeah. Uh, Nora? Yeah, ship right. Okay, two turn her ship Towards right. Towards table edge. Um, does that help him? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, any straight maneuver. Ugh. <sighs> if you use any straight maneuver, he's probably not getting shot. No, he, yeah, but I mean, at this point, you kind of want to see, I think he maybe needs to try to kill something do you want to try to bank towards him I maybe think cause a bump honestly as crazy as this is maybe he won banks Nora and then focus target locks now if I am Tristan and I'm not I think I move my um, number four T65 first and I think I 
do a three bank. Just tr- trying to get that bump? Yeah, because if, if that's, I, I think that's Joe's best move, is try to PS kill that one Xena, that one X Wing. No, and then if he does that, he's out of, that, that X Wing is out of the game for a while. Yeah, but he does have four other ships still. I don't know. I'm not necessarily saying it's the right call, but if he does that, he's going to get those other three ships can all hard two or one bank and line up beautifully. Because all Joe really wants out of this turn is obviously minimum damage, like him nor taking minimum damage. Mm-hmm. But if he can run away, he gets to shoot out the rear mm-hmm. and he gets to start regening. So if you're Joe then, do you hard two Nora ship right? Oh, you said ship right earlier, correct? Oh, I just wanted to talk about the option. I don't think it's the right option. I mean, ship two, uh, uh, a ship right... A hard to ship right on Nora. I think you're trying And then a barrel it. roll, it gets your rear arc, and you get target lock still. You have options, which you could then convert to a crit. If I was Joe, I'm probably going to try the crazy two bank ship left. Try to see if I can't bump that rookie or something. Okay, but then get you get less l- shots on you. But then you get lit up at range one by three other ships, and you have no tokens. Well, I mean, what, what are your other options here? So Tristan went the other way. Which, again, I guess thinks makes more sense. He's going to curve back around the outside of the rock. Instead of having to chase Nora. Yeah, it was a good idea. You no, know, that 100% makes sense. Why would you want to put your ship behind in the rear arc of an arc? That's right. So that's exactly why he decided to do that. So did he go for it? No. no. So he's just going to do for the, sm- the smarter move again, like always. Yeah, the less risky, the one bang made yeah. the most sense. The less risky, smarter move. If uh, Joe runs away the opposite way, tries to do you know, a ship right, like three bank or mm-hmm. something crazy, you're going to catch him. Mm-hmm. Um, if he tries to smash in, you got three ships at range one. Mm-hmm. Keeping your ships together, which is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, you tr- probably want to do a green maneuver, so eventually you can turn that bad boy around. If possible. Mm-hmm. Here is comes target the locking. Kill box. Is it target locking or is he focusing? I think I think focus is the way to go. Mm-hmm. That's why he's target locking. Hey, what do I know then? The member I said he's going to target lock with everybody, and then he can K turn them all, and then regen. The, oh, sorry, and then clear, and they get the stress focus. Yeah, I mean, is it more is it more prudent to go for consistent damage or just as throwing as many dice as possible every turn? I think he's setting up not this round. I don't think he's trying to kill her this round. I think he's going to keep most of those locks for next turn. So you think he's going to try to get in there with three or four ships all in focus target lock and try to kill her in like one turn? I think that's what his as idea is. As opposed to putting inconsistent dice, just throwing dice and hoping damage happens? That's my thought process based on what he did. So there you go. So we're going to see focus target lock, I think, on the X-Wing uh, 4. Oh, beautiful. He does not hit that rock either. And in this situation, I mean, that's not a great place for Nora to <laughs> No, be. She, doesn't, she doesn't like that. So she clears stress. She's probably... I think it's safe to assume we're going to see... A, a defensive BT, focused target lock? Uh, a BT... A, definitely... No, I think he's going to go... Well, we'll see. I think we'll see what the dice see, and then he'll make that decision when he gets it. He still has 3PO. Yeah. He still has R2. So it's going to be tough for him to get burned down in one turn. Target lock the X-Wing. Try to kill it before it can shoot. That's what I think. I think just you go, as defensive. I think you go for a PS kill, yeah, because then you're removing a 4-die attack. We'll see what his dice are. So Nora's going to roll 4 off the bat here. And then she's going to see... I spend my target lock to add another hit. Yep. That's exactly there what goes, I do. Four hits. Or yeah. Three hits of the crit. And that... That's what you need. Yeah, I think that's exactly that's exactly what I thought he would do, and that makes sense. It's a good call. Tristan only needs one of eight here to not die. Yeah, because he's got integrated astromech still. Oh. And, of course, oh. just for insult to injury, he's going to go ahead and evade two, take two, and pop the probably integrated on that, on that crit. Depending on what the crit is, yeah, absolutely. We don't know, but it's probably something worth popping. Damage sensor array or no? Hard to read. It's an action to remove, so... Structural damage. Structural damage. Oh. Okay, reduce your agility by one. He's thinking about it, and I think there it goes. Think he's keeping it, or did he pop? He might have popped integrated. We'll get an update on that soon. So that was a huge time to decide to roll two evades. Yeah. Uh, because now he's unfortunately going to eat a lot of laser blasting. Pew, pew, yeah, pew, he pew, couldn't pew, have died pew. either way. He does Ooh, have that's what we need yeah. So when you roll blanks like that, there's no need to hang on to your locks. You might as well re-roll. There you go. There's two. That helps. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if Tristan called. So he, he obviously... probably called zero on that one. I think there's no reason not to call it. You think just to go ahead and call it on the first you're, one? You're just gonna call it. Like that's true. You're not in a situation where you desperately need uh, an evade result to survive. So there's you... no turn where an evade's gonna help you more than another at this point. That's so true. you just gonna call it, right? That's true. Uh, that's double crit. Uh, right, there's the shields. Right on the shields. The shields down on... Right in the shields. Yeah. Right in the fields. Okay, so not looking great. That's uh, the range one. 
And here's where Tristan casually underhand chucks. So this is going to be a huge attack. If dice uh, help okay. him... Here come four crits. Uh, one hit, one crit. I mean, it's still pretty good. Uh, looks like a blank. Yeah, so that's two. Hit, hit and a crit. What's the crit going to be? All right, we'll get our live update momentarily. Yep. And the last X-Wing is range two, I think. Yeah. Uh, he, did, he did pop the integrator. He did pop integrator. Okay. So that means the X-Wing one is down to one hull. And we'll try to get enough. No, it's taking no, another it's down to two. Instead of two. No, it's down to one, sorry. Yeah, no, it's yeah, two. All right, so a pretty rough turn for Nora. She took five by the looks of it. Yeah. Structural damage. On Structural damage on Nora. Oh, no. Oh. Canceling the 3PO. Yeah, so now You can't just... use 3PO if you don't roll. So that's a really heartbreaking crit to get on a ship <laughs> that really desperately needs that effect type. I mean, that's not what you want to see ever on a 1 of 8 ship. It's even worse on a 1 of 8 ship that's equipped with 3PO. Because now the only way that Joe was able to proc 3PO is if he's at range 3. That's right. Or obstructed. That's right. And uh, if any of you have flown an arc before, you know in the situation that he's in right now, it's going to be tough for him to get both the green die to remove his stress and regen and still be able to stay at range three. So I think Joe's only call right now is going to be to go three forward, try to regen. Get out of there, get your shields back, try to come back. At which point he's going to be staring down the barrel of a stress hog because probably Tristan's going to hard to yep. ship right on the Y wing. He's going to K turn the Z's because they will fit. He's going to get uh, the rookie out of the way, I think, and he's going to K turn the rest of the fleet. You think he's going to try to get the rookie out of, like number five out of the way? I think he's going to try to leave him there to bump Nora. Like, that would be mean if he just didn't move him. Uh, if you self-bump, if Nora goes a two straight to try to get out of there... That's, uh, that's actually brilliant. That's probably what I would do. I'm a big fan, and people will know after all this rounds of Swiss and stuff, that yeah. I like bumping myself for blocking. Mm-hmm. So then, do you even think he bothers to K-turn the other Zs, then? Uh, I mean, I think, I think why not? You might as well put Arcs on her. You're going to have to move the first Z, yeah. so your options would then be... Uh, move, uh, have the other guys move so the number five and number two move bump and then have your number one move mm -hmm. and then Nora potentially moves and bumps uh, Zed number two mm -hmm. and that feels pretty good. Yeah, so basically you move, you you move um, basically you decide to move X-Wing 5 first, bump the Z. Yep. Then you move um, you move uh, Z2. Z2 forward and bump. Yep. And then you get rid of the other two who clear the path. And, and probably and hope that bumps. a one bank ship left on number four. Clear the stress. You can K turn on this next turn. And, yeah, and, and then you can K turn with the Z in behind Nora. Yeah. And then you get technically two shots on her, potentially at range one, if she does the two or the three. That's right. We'll see. We'll see what he does. Only time will tell. I mean, by this is not. I don't. I don't relish the situation that Joe is in right now. He's he's up against it in the situation. Um, it's a bad turn of luck by that. X-Wing surviving. I mean, I think I still think he made the right call going for the max damage to kill it. I think he had to to stay in the mm -hmm. game. Um, I'm not sure how much that defensive target lock focus would have saved him. Probably damage. not. It would have saved him at most one damage, but as Travis was saying, not knocking that X-Wing off the board would have saved him much more. The only thing with not trying to attack the X-Wing and get it off the table is you're not guaranteed. Remember that that X-Wing also has R4 D6. That's true. Had he got five hits, you'd have been like, all right, I'm going to take two. Actually, you would you cancel it down to three. They cancel it down to two. Cancel it down to three. To two. Mm -hmm. Cancel it to two. We fight. shall see. Fight. We oh, okay, let's double check. We'll bring it up and Round see how it works. Round nine. Fight. No, let's just. I mean, I don't really fly. I don't. I can't talk if you're singing. I don't fly. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. Two remaining. It shows you how often I fly. But Calculated I, droid action. I'm not a fan of flying big droids, so. I try not to fly it. So I don't know what it does? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of it as a as a, as a play experience. So I try not. I mean, to but if you're field. if you're building this list and you have one point left, I mean, you're gonna give them the R2 astromech instead. No, I'm not denying how in, how you always use the droid. It's just one of those things where when you come up against something often enough, you don't want to use it yourself. At least that's how weird that's I am. Enough. Okay, so I understand that. You can see Tristan valiantly trying to fly it cleanly, and then as he removes his templates, just knocking the rest of his ships <laughs> out of the way. Um, oh, okay. So K turn. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do any of the bump shenanigans. No, I think he's trying to fly it a little safer. Mm -hmm. You can respect that. Mm -hmm. So I don't... He, well, he obviously can't 4K right. the, the X-Wing now. So. so maybe he's going to go for the bump with the X-Wing? Uh, the one bank bump? Or just the... Uh, yeah, the one bank or even just... Yeah, that's probably what I would think. One bank. 
and then just have a kill box between the Zeds and maybe maybe your Y-Wing. So he's going for the two-turn block. I like it. Oh, he's trying to... He's, he's going to try to uh, block that escape vector, and then... Um... And it could do a great position for next turn. You're going to do the K-turn, or yep. even just a two-turn if uh, Nora banks. Absolutely, that's a great choice. Other than self-bumping yourself to sit there for a potential block, this does make more sense, because if Nora flies past you, fine. But now he's got the target locks up for next round when he 4Ks, and I think he did that. Yeah, okay, so he did the hard two there. So yep. if Nora does go three straight, she will clear that, and she will be able to blast that Y-Wing and at least take that off the board, potentially. Now remember that Nora... Yeah. We've determined that the... No, we're doing what time here. We're procking the X-Wing out of oh, the way okay. because I feel confident. Oh, so I think that's a two range down, so... Yeah, I remember the three was not green. Oh, that's right. Yes, my mistake. So we yeah. have to do the two. Yeah. Um, so, and does she clear? Oh, two bang. bang. I knew he'd go for the bang. Smart. It's more distance. You need them more. You need as much distance as possible. Remember, you're rocking zero agility. Yep. Yeah, and you have not a lot. So another good call by Joe. I mean, yeah, like I said, he's making great choices. So you target lock focus. I think so Joe grabbing a shield back here. And try to wipe the gold squadron pilot off the board. I guess, or you try to put damage on that the X wing because the the Y is out of the fight again. No, looks like he's target locking gold squadron. Because, you know what, it is more dice, the higher probability of him killing it. The gold squadron's sitting on two hull. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, it's also out of the fight. It is, but it's... He, I think he needs to clear up some board space to give himself some room to maneuver. Remember, he does have vectored thrusters, and he probably wants to go two straight next turn. Yeah. Um, now that where he's gone, you can expect that other X-Wing to to hard two. Yeah, 100%. Instead of the K-turn, because he's going to have a target lock for next round, target lock focus, so that's going to be a problem for Joe to deal with. So... Um, so, um, I wonder, a bit of pointing going on here, but that's a range one shot, so... Ooh, some hot okay. fire. Uh, uh, keep I the focus. Keep that focus. Yeah, I think you just go with the hit-hit. I think the it's hit, really hit, value right? here to spend the target lock. Just spend it for... <laughs> oh. Just for the loss? Well, to be honest with you, where his tar because where his target lock is... Okay, so that doesn't make a difference, the why, why gold squadron's gone. Yeah, well, if he got one of eight, he still would have died, right? So. so you don't need to spend the target lock at all. all right. No, I did nothing either way. There you go. So that's going to give him some breathing room, at the very least. And he still hasn't a focus token to... Oh no, he's not going to get any dice, though. So really, it's going to be the essential... Uh, what's really going to change this game, or end this game right now. Do those Zeds do damage? They're throwing naked dice, but Nora has no agility? Yeah. I if mean, they if, do three, if they do three damage, that's game. If Joe could get a uh, uh, four, because uh, okay. shield. But uh, if Joe can get out of here, maybe only losing that one shield, we could still see a game of X-Men. He needs it. He needs it. He needs. He needs. Uh, he needs Tristan to not roll. Tristan's been rolling some hot fire. That's not hot All fire. All right, that, that's what you want to see. That's what Joe needs. That's what Joe needs. He needs another one of those, yeah. or just a one hit, yeah. to really survive this game. Okay, and Ooh, oh, that's literally everything. It's Joe literally needed. the best thing that could happen for Joe. Yeah. Get out of there. Get your shields back. Come back and try to kill that other X-wing. Yeah, but the problem is, is that the X-wing he wants to shoot down is gonna be out of his range, and that's right. structural damage is not a crit that you can turn over. So he is definitely like he's flying on edge here now. He's got to try to keep his Nora as far away from everybody as he can. But Z's at this point, do they do they just go four straight and not care about that stress to try to close the gap to keep that, or do they want to get uh, tokens back? I feel like if I was Tristan, I'd probably. Try to just reform everything. You're not going to take the best shooting turn. Go in the one straight, or whatever clears that rock. Mm -hmm. Grab your target locks. Mm -hmm. You're going to two-turn with that one X-Wing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can grab a focus. Maybe he's going to get a shot. Mm -hmm. Number four is going to two-turn as well. Hopefully, he can grab a target lock. Close your formation back in, and all you need is one solid turn of everyone getting a shot, mm -hmm. and we have our first PTL champion. Now, if you're a Joe, do you do the two bang again to green and regen? Point yourself towards one of those rocks and barrel roll around it, or do you just get the hell out of there? I think two straight. I think I do the two bank ship left mm -hmm. so towards Joe's table edge. That makes sense. Um, hopefully, the two turn from number five will either will be out of arc if you can barrel roll. Maybe just get out of there, figure out what you're doing because I don't think going towards uh, towards the center of the table makes any sense whatsoever. Because that's where... That's where everything's facing. And that's where Tristan's going to have the most room. room the most to breathing room, that's yeah. right. you got to try to separate these guys somehow. If you can get them apart, yeah. you can pick them off one at a time, you might have a chance. Yeah, and Nora can do damage. on a, In a one-on-one -on -one situation, I take Nora against any one of those ships on the table. That's right. Nora can win if she if she's the last ship. Mm -hmm. If she can one-on-one -on -one something, she will win. She will survive. It's rough without the agility. Mm-hmm. 
but you know the the Zeds don't throw a whole lot with of the, damage with the regen and, and the regen and her and her abilities working in tandem, and she does right. have the three. She will he'll she'll only have the three PO on that uh, on the range threes. There's definitely a potential here. So we'll see what. Oh, the one bank. That's an even better choice. So you're getting a shot no matter what you do. Yeah. And I feel like that's what Joe kind of wants right now. I think he needs these ships to be apart. So if Joe th thought the one bank was coming, does he one bank his arc and then real tail arc? No, because yeah, this is coming too. So Tristan's just going to go two straight. Distance. He's going to go two straight clear stress and pull a target lock. So I think, I think this is where the two bank ship left for for Nora's probably a good call. All right. It's going to be a one on one. You're going to have two shields. Yeah, he she will dodge arcs, and that's going to bypass the rocket. Looks like. Yep, looks yeah, like quite it. nicely. Should be fine. And then he probably pulls target lock again, setting yep. up. I think there's no reason not to take a target lock. That's what you got to do: is set up the kill box and yep. just just get rid of her. Yeah. All your ships are pretty healthy. I mean, yeah. at least the ones here haven't been touched yet, so you're not worried about it too much. And that's exactly what's really good about him keeping that X-Wing, the, the damage X-Wing in the back there. He's got all of his... He cycled out to only the healthy ships, and as you called him, two, two bank. Yeah. That's going to avoid at least one arc. He's going to yeah. regen a shield. Now do you... Do you barrel roll out of the way of that X-Wing? Can, can you barrel roll out of the way? I'm going to say no. Uh, you can if he go barrel rolls the back of his ship base to the... Back of his ship base. Oh. Oh, okay. So he's going to try to do that instead. Yeah, um, I like it. I like it. You can so, hit the rock next turn, um, but it looks like you might avoid both of the Zeds. So he's opted to take one shot from a focused target lock ship instead of two, three shots, actually. I guess I guess this is the least amount of uh, dice he's going to take. Yeah, and it way. also puts uh, that X-Wing in a really weird position next turn. Yeah. Unless it does a two turn and maybe catches Nora on the rock. That would be interesting. Okay, so he was trying to turn down the structural damage, and that's feels bad because he didn't turn it down. That was um, huge. Yeah, that's tough too with those action removal crits. It's it's, it's so tough. Now, of course, f uh, fight fans at home will realize that that technically did happen out of sequence, um, unless you don't have to use an action to flip that one down. Let's uh, roll the die. Okay, so he can roll the die. It's his PTL, right? You can do it. In his yeah, but you have to. You can only PTL for actions on your upgrade bar. So he would have to have done the action to roll it down first, and then the PTL for the uh, for the barrel roll because vector thrusters add to your action bar. That's right. So, so again, technically he couldn't have barrel rolled. Technically he well, if, as long as vector thrusters adds it to your action bar, you'd be okay. Yeah, he, it does. And then you're fine. It's just it happened out of sequence. You have to roll first and then barrel roll. Um, it's just one of those things. It is technically that's the rule. Um, but it is one of those things. So again, like Nora, Tristan avoiding all damage on a T. Like Nora's taking no damage here. And now she's going to eat. She still eats two arcs, so I think the other Z might have a shot. All right, here comes oh, the target lock. Yeah, you definitely. So if he target locks and gets four hits, we have our PTL champion. Uh, yes. Is that, no, that's, that can't be right. Oh, I saw double damage, all right. Oh, direct hit, so... Wait a second. No, because remember that we had another shield from Nora because she did agree with her. She did regen, so she would have yeah. had two shields, so she's yeah. at one hall right now. She's at one hall right now. I think that Zed escapes, but there's a rock. But why would Tristan not focus target lock then? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not sure what happened that turn um, either. Maybe he's just trying to get this perfect turn. Coming up next turn, everyone gets... I mean, if you reroll... I mean, a focus, target lock, a focus into a hit. If he target locks into a focus, he wins the game that turn. That's right. Unless my math is off. No, you're right, but remember that he didn't know that it was going to be a direct hit. Um, and there's also a chance if he hits the rock next turn with that guy, he doesn't have any actions whatsoever. So you think he held on to the art? He held on to the rock to be able to do to basically fly through that rock and still have potential action. Yeah, I think so. I think we're going to see a K turn through the rock this turn. That's interesting, though. I think I feel like in my in that situation, you're so you, you're, you're so close to victory. You just try to seal it there, but I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what I don't know. Yeah, I understand. Well, I have to ask him after how what he was thinking, like why he went that. Not like he did anything wrong. No, for sure. I'm just curious as to why he made that decision in that process. It'd be really cool to understand what he was thinking, like get into the mind of a of the player. We'll ask him after. Maybe he just thought that the crit wouldn't have been a double damage, and no matter what happened, he would have had uh, Nora would have had one health. And then regen last turn, so he wanted to hold on to the thing. Yeah. And then if you throw all your dice and miss, then she could run away and maybe get all her things back. And you want to make sure, guarantee that you're gonna get some more damage next turn. Probably what I'm thinking, but you never know. I mean, right. Tristan's been flying very differently than we would have predicted. 
That's actually a good point. That probably could be his thought process because the maximum, without a direct hit, the max damage you could have done was four. Putting her at one. She had five health, so he probably elected to hold on to his, to his target lock. So I, myself, I probably would have rerolled to try to get that aggressive damage. I mean, maybe the rock will uh, will win uh, Tristan in the open. There is also seven direct hits in the game, so the, the likelihood of you pulling one is actually quite high. It's the highest, yeah. It's so. a very high probability. It's uh, greater than one in five, right? Yeah. It's better odds than actually rolling the crit to begin with. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so turn it in. It's kill box o'clock. Not really a box, really more like a kill wave. Kill fan o'clock. Kill fan, that's what it is. There <laughs> you go. He's, he's katanaing this. Mortal Kombat reference for those of you who are like not 14. Mortal Kombat exists. There was a new one with like, x-rays and stuff. It was silly. Oh, right. That's right. I was in grade school when the first one came out and they had to try banning it and Super Nintendo version had sweat instead of blood and I was right. so sad because I had the Super Nintendo version. Yeah, so gotta go over the rock to regen, hope you don't take the damage. Um, I mean, again, Joe's doing his best here, but there's just... It, it, Tristan's list is really... So Tristan went for a bump, really finally. Sure. Finally went for a predictable bump. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the rock wins the open. Yeah, Alright, yeah, guys, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. it. This is the end of the first PTL Open. Tristan's our winner with some great Rebel Jank. I'm happy to see a list like this as the Well, the you final know the game's list. still going on, just in case you're curious, because you do regen first before you lose that. Do you really? Game. Yeah, I wanted, to see Whoa. Long, I wanted to see how long you'd go for before you realized that you were just making a really fool, big fool of yourself. Well, that's what I do. Okay, so maybe you should try uh, becoming better at this game, as we say in the North, instead of... You should try acquiring more skill in this game. Uh, however, uh, he is going to finally do some damage onto an X-Wing. Takes one shield. And now is the pain train. Uh, he actually might have dodged that X-Wing's arc. No. What am no. I saying? What no. am I saying? What am I doing? Somebody Maybe you should me. be better, as they say in the yes. north, right, bud? Maybe I should get better. <laughs> Maybe I should acquire more skill at this game. Oh, goodbye. All right. There we go. Okay. Now you can go into your spiel. So now we have the end of the game. Apparently I'm a scrub, that's why they put us on stream, we don't know what we're talking about. So we do have our first ever PTL champion, uh, he's an extended PTL family member, but again, Joe flew a great match, it was a really tough matchup, but I mean, it was really great to be able to see Tristan pull off the seismic torpedo. Yeah, and absolutely. I'd like to say the seismic torpedo was almost integral to his victory there. Yeah, it was absolutely. It huge, because you could tell that Joe didn't, I don't think, saw that coming, and he had that entirely clear lane and just... Plowed through his entire, plowed through with his entire list. Absolutely, I think even if he saw it coming, he couldn't have, he couldn't have chanced it that Tristan didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So he had to make the safe move, which wasn't the best move. And there's the open championship plaque. It's awesome. There's also a trophy that he'll get to take home for some amount of time, from my understanding, and then bring it back like the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Uh, before quickly, before we sign off, we just wanted to say thank you to everybody who came out to the open. We had people come down and visit us, come up and visit us from the states. We had people from our extended family members in the outside of the Ontario region. Yep. You were all awesome. You all came in. You all bought into the spirit of our organization and what we were believing. You brought cool lists. You flew like champions. You were all awesome. So thank you for coming out and making this an amazing event. Thank you very much to VTTV for doing all this streaming wonderfulness out of their just out of the glory of their own hearts, putting yeah, on an absolutely. amazing presentation. And uh, thank you to the hostess with the mostest. We hope you guys enjoyed our commentary. We, we hope, let us know thoughts, comments, uh, love, hate, like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. I know that's normally your thing to say, but we hope you guys had a great time and uh, we can't wait to do this, this again. Is, uh, Zuckus and Forlom on the Miss Hunter signing off. Hit the calculations to make the jump to hyperspeed. We're out of here.